Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton High School. It's Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad for the call. Bob Hamilton is our cameraman. It is Friday, May 4th, and the five and three Hopkinton Hillers welcome in the seven and two Holliston Panthers. Holliston is led by head coach Joe Santos. The Hopkinton Hillers led by second year head coach Steve Simos. Well, at least second year in this stretch for Coach <laughs> Simos. Let's take a look at the Holliston batting order. Leading things off is going to be number 12, Ben Thomas, a right fielder. Number nine, Danny Radowitz, a shortstop, will bat second. Number six, Tim Ringy, designated hitter, batting third. In the cleanup spot, number eight, center fielder Brad Seymour. Batting fifth, number 15, Sean Jewett, the catcher. Batting sixth, number 13, Jack Larsh, the third baseman. Batting seventh, number 18, Zach Pesson, the first baseman. And batting eighth, Kevin Quinn, who is number five, and is the second baseman. And rounding out the order for the Holliston Panthers is number four, Lewis Rossi, the left fielder, and their pitcher is Owen Ward. Let's send it over to Larry Sacklad with the Hopkinton Hillers defense. Thanks, Tom. Let's go around the horn. We got. Ryan Kester playing third. Timmy Burdick playing short today. Cole Glassburn playing second base. Zelmo Sosinski playing first base. Left to right, Connor Hebert. Tommy Ambrosino and Anthony Farina behind the plate. Drew Rancatori on the mound. Tommy Leone, the captain. All right, well, there it is, the Hopkinton Hillers defense. The Hillers just getting off of two walk-off home wins. And, Larry, they have been playing some good baseball so far this season, standing at 5-3. and three. Might be the new field renovations. Crowd, we'll get a crowd shot in a bit. Sitting behind home plate is the Tom McIntyre Pavilion, they call it. We have a new backstop with some netting. 22 foot high, so the kids won't have to chase as many foul balls this year. And two beautiful dugouts. They spent a lot of time, a lot of volunteer time, fundraising to get this field in perfect shape. And they certainly did a wonderful job renovating this field and getting it in shape after it was destroyed once again by the Boston Marathon festivities with the Diamond. Uh, Looks nice and the field is ready to go and so are we as Ben Thomas, the right fielder, steps in for the Holliston Panthers and there will be a lot of names you probably recognize from Ashland Legion Baseball, which we had for you this past summer and we'll have for you once again this season. And we'll partner up once again with WACA TV out of Ashland for that and we are ready to go as Thomas steps in and awaits the opening pitch from Tom Leone. Wind up and the pitch. There's ball one. Thomas is a power hitter. I think he's got one triple, one home run. He's hitting 429. And as you recall, he hits the balls to the gap, left and right, with some Leone's oomph on it. Set the deal. That is a fair ball as that's gonna stop in the grass and now it's ruled foul, one and one. That should have been an easy call. Yeah, it did look like uh, it hit the dirt and foul territory. We got ones on the board, Tom. Indeed we do. Leone awaits the sign. Wind up and the pitch. That one just outside, two and one. Usually it takes Tommy a little bit of time to find his release point, and then when he gets into a groove, he really gets into a groove. And it is a beautiful afternoon today. Temperatures in the high 60s, low 70s. A few clouds in the sky, but a perfect day for some Hillers baseball. A three and one count on Thomas. I think I see a tree moving, so we have a breeze. There's always a breeze here. Wind up in the pitch. That one is inside and Ben Thomas will draw the walk. So lead man on for Holliston. And that'll bring up Danny Radowitz, the shortstop. 
I think his family makes pretzels. I don't quote me on that, but it's supposed to be delicious. Danny Radowitz, three for nine on the season at the plate. As Tom Leone awaits the sign and is set to go. Runner is leading off of first. We'll get you the pitching stats on Leone in just a moment. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Radowitz is built a little closer to the ground. He's got good hands. That's what my scouting report says. Tom Leone, a 5.25 ERA in three appearances. Checking at first, runner back safe. The ball did hit the ground on the throw over, but a nice job by Sasitsky. Leone has thrown eight innings this season and given up six earned runs and struck out five. He's faced 37 batters. Runner leading off of first, Leone set to deal. Runner taking off the throw up and it's not gonna be in time. A stolen base for the speedster. Ben Thomas and Larry, we saw Ben Thomas with a lot of stolen bases during the Ashland Legion season. We did, we did. I think they stole that one on Tommy. His first pickoff move didn't look very good, obviously. So they figured they might get a little better, better lead. Coach Simos is telling Tommy to step off the back of the rub and look the runner back. As he wants to make some defensive adjustments. And Thomas always a threat to steal as Radowitz awaits the 1-1 pitch. Runner leading off once again. Swinging strike. That was a mismatch right there. Just blew it right by him. Certainly a lot of talent on this Hollison team and they got off to a nice start as well. Seven and two on the season at the top of the TVL. They just recently got a big win over Medway. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike there and that'll be out number one. Tommy just overpowered Radowitz. All fastballs, no, nothing secondary here so far. I'll bring up Tim Bringi, the designated hitter. Another familiar name from Ashland Legion. Once he's on the mound, he's a little bit of a crafty righty. Tommy worked on his curveball over the winter. A little bit more sharp than last year. Line up in the pitch just like that. Nice strike there on the inner corner. Tim Ringy on the season is seven for 22 at the plate, a 318 batting average, five RBIs to his credit. Runner leading off of second as Leone will step off and take a peek over. Holliston likes to bring the pressure on the base paths. A lot of speed in this lineup. Sean Jewett isn't afraid to run, and Brad Seymour isn't afraid to run. run. And Lewis Rossi. The runner taking off from second. That pitch is just up high, and that's going to be another stolen base for Ben Thomas. Tommy's going to have to vary his times to the plate, give a double look, hold the ball a little bit longer. The 1-1 one, one to Ringy. Thomas with a slight lead off of third. That one's inside, two and one. New dugouts look like they could fit 20 guys in there. Ben Thomas, a 486 on base percentage. Pretty impressive. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away, two and two. And Thomas had eight steals on the season coming into this game. Now has 10. He has stolen twice. Mano a mano here. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Just upstairs, full count. Brad Seymour, the cleanup man on deck. Singles, doubles guy, Brad Seymour. Blessed with plenty of speed. Leone looks over at third and now is set to deal. 
Followed into the backstop. Count remains full on Ringy. Might be a little dent ball with this brick facade in front of the Tom A. McIntyre Pavilion. Leone from the stretch. Looks over at third and deals. That one's fouled away. Count remains full. A good battle going on between Tim Ringy and Tom Leone. Thomas is waiting for the littlest bobble around home plate, and he'll be going. Leone deals. And this is ripped up the third base side. That's going to get through for a base hit. Ben Thomas comes around to score, and it's one to nothing Holliston, an RBI single for Ringy. We'll bring up Brad Seymour, the cleanup hitter and center fielder. Brad Seymour, a good bunner, but being in the cleanup spot. Seymour at a 296 on the season. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Based on our angle where, where we're at, all these kids look like they're six feet tall or better. Right, because <laughs> we're kind of at a downward angle. Leone set the deal. Runner taking off from first, the bunt pulled back, the throw up is not gonna be in time. Pretty good throw up by Rankatori, but just not in time as the speedster Ringy has the third stolen base of the game for Holliston. Stevie Simos normally behind the plate, but he had an MRI on his shoulder. He hasn't had much luck the last few years with wrist and arm injuries. So we have the uh, sophomore behind the plate. And we were blessed to see Alex Reynolds last year, Tri-Valley MVP. Leone set the deal. And there's a called strike, one and two. Leone working from the stretch. One out, runner on second, one already in for Holliston. And this is blooped up, third base side, picked up by the third baseman. The throw over is not gonna be in time. And everybody's safe. So an infield single for Seymour. Ringy stays put at second. That'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. I think he's struggling on the year. I think that's what the stats say, but correct me if I'm wrong. There was no fault uh, with Kester over there. That ball had a lot of blood on it and spin. Yeah. So it would have been a great play if he had gotten him. Just an awkwardly hit ball. Drew it at a 107 on the season. Three for 28 at the plate. Runner with a big lead off of second. And there's a strike, 0 and 1. Jack Larsh, the third baseman, due up next for Holliston. Jewett looks like he's put on a few pounds since the summer. Leone gets the sign he likes. Runners on first and second. He deals, swing strike, 0 and 2. He's Holliston's Vlad Guerrero. Swinging any of Leone is certainly going to use that to his advantage. Leone from the stretch. Both runners with a lead for Holliston. And there's strike three, but the ball gets away. He's uh, going to take off. First base was occupied, so he's automatically out. Yep. And that is going to be out number two. Second strikeout of the game for Leone. Ringy. Did push up to third and Seymour up to second. So that's the one advantage of the ball getting by Rankatori. And that'll bring up Jack Larsh, the third baseman. We didn't see much of him with post 77. I think he was a bit player or a vacation player. He'd come up and play a game, miss a week, come back up and play a game. He's a pretty good football player though. 318 on the season this year. This one's popped up 
And it'll get past the backstop, 0-1. Larsh is 7 for 22 overall, 5 RBIs, 1 run scored. Leone from the stretch, both runners leading off of 2nd and 3rd. And there's a strike, 0-2. Tommy went corner picking there. That's what he needs to do, stay out of the fat middle part of the plate. Work inside, outside, and then throw an occasional curveball. He should be fine. Leone set to deal. That one is just inside, a one and two. Francatori held that for a little bit longer, see if the umpire would give him the call, but the umpire didn't give it to him. Jack Larsh is able to reach. Zach Pesson would get up to the plate for Holliston. <laughs> Chirpy bunch over that Panther dugout, yes? They certainly are, as that one's fouled away. And at 7-2, and two, I'd say they deserve to be a bit chirpy. They're having a good season. Well, hopefully the Hillers will send them home unhappy today. Absolutely. Hallison hitting a 265 as a team. Leone. Thanks for the refreshments, by the way, Tom. Anytime. That's fouled away, one and two. Defensive swing there. Good battle here between Leone and Larsh. Last two games, there's been extended first innings for the pitchers. Zach Sosidski had a long first inning in the last game. Leone working from the stretch. And that is fouled away. The battle continues on. Might have to call Dr. Scholl for that one. That one right off his foot. Well, he only being worked pretty hard in this first inning. Pitch count certainly up there. He's a big, strong kid. He can, he can go deep. But Coach Simos is trying to stretch his guys out to about 80 pitches max right now at this part of the season because they've a lot of games coming up. Yeah, especially with all the rain delays early in the season as this one's hit in the air over to left center and it is handled by Ambersoni for the third and final out. But Holliston does play to run. It is one to nothing Panthers as we head to the bottom of the first. It's Hopkinton Hillers baseball in HCAM. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School as we are ready for the bottom of the first. Let's take a quick look at the Hillers lineup. Leading things off is the designated hitter, Ben McKenzie. Tommy Ambrosoni, the center fielder, batting second. Zach Sasitsky, the first baseman, batting third. In the cleanup spot, it's the right fielder, Anthony Farina. Batting fifth is Ryan Kessler, the third baseman. Sixth is the catcher, Drew Rancatori. Second baseman, Cole Glassburns, batting seventh. Batting eighth is Tim Burdick, the shortstop. Batting ninth, Connor Hebert, the Left fielder and Tom Leone is the pitcher. And of course out of the lineup today. As Holliston or uh, as Hopkinton getting ready to come up to the plate. We'll take a look at the Holliston defense. Larry, would you like to read off the Holliston right, defense? I'll do for that us? for you. Third base, Jack Larch, shortstop, Danny Rodowitz, Kevin Quinn at second base, Zach Pesson over at first base, left to right, Louis Rossi. Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas. You'll remember those three guys from the summer. Owen Ward on the hill and Sean Jewett behind the plate. As Ben McKenzie steps in to start things off for the Hillers on this Friday afternoon. A one nothing lead for Holliston. That one inside, 1-0. One oh. Ben, one of the three Musketeers from last year in the outfield. Patrolled center field along with Ryan Wolf and Brett McIntyre. Got a torn labrum this year that's keeping him out of the lineup. But he get, gets a piece of this one, rips it. Third base side into left field it goes. A leadoff single for McKenzie. I was just going to say, but he's hitting the ball. He had a home run out to left center field right where the white SUV was the other day. It was a bomb. And that'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder. 
Wind up and the pitch. That is just outside from Owen Ward. Coach Simos really likes this kid a lot. He says he's going to be a gold glove center fielder. Ward working from the stretch. There's a called strike, one and one. He pulled that suicide squeeze the other day against Westwood, I believe. And to your point about Ben McKenzie, McKenzie hitting a 414 on the season, 12 RBIs and 10 runs. Impressive numbers. And he loves to swipe bags. And he's taken off right now as this is ripped into left field. That gets down for a base hit. And the outfielder having trouble tracking it down. Runner being waved around third. Here he comes, Ben McKenzie will score the first run of the game for the Hillers, an RBI double for Tommy Ebersoni. A 1-1 ball game, and Zach Sasitsky, the first baseman, will come up to the play. Zach heading off to Georgetown next year. He's gonna be a Hoya. He'll be heading down to the Smithsonian's every weekend for his uh, intake of culture. I doubt that, but I had to say it for his mom and dad. That one is outside, one and out. That was a good piece of hitting there by Ambersoni. He was at a 250 coming into this game. And that was his fifth hit of the season and his second RBI of the year. He's given Ward a little trouble over there because he is blessed with some speed. Not quite Ben McKenzie's speed, but pretty close. It was also his first double of the season. That one is low. 2-0. Good eye with Zach there. Zach Sasitsky had a 3.33 mark on the season, seven for 21 overall. Two runs scored, seven RBIs. As he gets a piece of this one, rips it right up the middle. Ambersoni being waved around third. The throw in is not in time, and the Hillers have a 2-1 lead as Sasitsky slides safely into second. An RBI single for Sasitsky, and he advances to second on the throw in. Well, Seymour picked up the ball, but Penson wasn't on the mound ready for the cut because he could have caught Zach between first and second base there. So these are little mental mistakes that can cost you a game. Well, no outs for the Hillers, and they are rallying early on as they already have the two to one lead. Yep. Sitsky with a big lead off a second. There's a strike. Got bullpen activity already for the Holliston Panthers. Well, this is a big game for these two teams. It could very well have big implications in who takes the TVL title. Ward set to deal. That one is low, gets by the catcher. Sasitsky will easily advance up to third. A wild pitch there. One and one on Farina. The Hillers in good shape. With a runner on third and no outs. Sean Jewett was gonna work on his lateral movement right and left over the winter time because he is a good blocker on anything uh, near the plate. Anthony Farina at a 364 on the season as he takes that one up high. He had a sack fly in the last game for walk off that nine inning affair. Six RBIs and four runs for Farina, the cleanup man. Got good power. Certainly a good hitter to have in that cleanup role as well. As this is popped up in the air, shallow center field, and that's caught by the shortstop. A nice play by Radowitz. Definitely saved a run there as Sasitsky stays put at third. A little a jam shot there. Yeah. And that was an awkward ball to play for Radowitz. Was able to get to it in time as Ryan Kester, the third baseman, will step in. Kester having a good season so far at the plate, a 350 overall, seven for 20. Three runs scored and an RBI to his credit. He will put the bat on the ball, so. That one's fouled away, 0 and 1. Coach Simos may be playing contact here. Zach Sasitsky, a very heady base runner. He knows what to do. Sitsky with a slight lead off of third as Ward looks over and now deals. And this is hit in the air and it is in foul territory but maybe playable and it's caught by the catcher, Jouette. 
And that is the second out of the inning for the Hillers. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori, the Hillers catcher. So Sasitsky over at third now with two outs. Drew Rankatori has not had a hit yet this season. He is 0 for 3 at the plate, but has only had four plate appearances. There he is. gets a piece of this one into right field. That's going to drop down for a hit. And Sosinski comes around to score the third Hillers run of the day. Three to one, Hopkinton. They going to get that ball for him? RBI single for Drew Rankatori, and that is a nice way to have your first hit of this season as Cole Glasper in the second baseman steps in. He's got a home run to his record out in Millis. Wasn't a cheapie. 222 on the season for the second baseman. Takes a strike, 0 and 1. He has three runs and two RBIs to his credit, as well as the home run you mentioned. He and Brendan Kelly had almost identical shots in that game. One went a little bit further than the other. That one is fouled away. That one off the catcher, 0 and 2. Clouds uh, starting to roll in. No rain is expected, but there is a slight chance of a storm later in the afternoon. Ward working from the stretch. Runner leading off of first. He deals. And Glasper able to get a piece of this. It's played by the shortstop. He'll step on second to get the force out, and that'll wrap up the bottom of the first, but not before the Hillers plate three runs. And as we head to the top of the second, it's Hopkinton three, Holliston one. You're watching Hopkinton Hillers baseball on HCAM. Top of the second inning, a three to one lead for the Hillers as the wind picking up a Little bit here at field two at Hopkinton High School. Tom Leone out there for another inning of work and he will face the seven, eight, and nine hitters. Zach Pesson, Kevin Quinn, and Lewis Rossi do up for the Panthers. For those of you just tuning in, an exciting first inning. Holliston started off with a run, but the Hillers responded with three of their own and lead it three to one. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to Bring you Hillers baseball. As this is hit in the left field, that's going to drop in for a hit. Pesson's going to round first, heading over to second. The throw in is not in time, and that is going to be a double for Pesson. And it looks like Hebert may have had a little trouble out there with that one. And they're sending the runner back to, oh, he's just getting his helmet, so. There's still some bombs out in the uh, outfield, little divots from the marathon, so. Yeah, it looks like he got tripped up a little bit trying to get to that one or on the throw in. And that'll bring up Kevin Quinn. So a leadoff double for Zach Pesson. And Kevin Quinn, the second baseman, stepping in. Hopefully Tommy can make this a quick inning. Line up in the pitch. There's a strike. I talked to the umpire in between innings. He said he was throwing very hard. Occasional curveball mixed in. He's got to be economical with his pitches, though. Leone looks at second, and we get time called. From the stretch, runner leading off of second. That one is low. Nice pick by Ran Rancatori. Kevin Quinn had a 176 on the season, three for 17, four runs scored and an RBI. Leone from the stretch. That one is low and outside, two and one. Maybe our cameraman will be able to pan over and get a look at the crowd behind home plate in the new pavilion at some point during the game. For those of you watching, you want to come and see a game right behind the plate. Yeah, it's certainly a nice view from behind that plate and pleasant area too. Some nice stands 
shrubbery fresh from a uh, place up the street yeah. that knows a little bit about shrubbery. See, when the ball goes off a righty's bat and then that dugout, it's like a ping pong ball. Everybody dies for cover. The dugouts are very nice too. I got a chance to sit in the Hillers dugout a little while as that one is ripped foul. Two and two. Almost took out the coach along the first base side there with that one. That's all right, that's all right. Well, it's a good look at a lot of the future Ashland Legion players this coming summer with these two teams today. We'll have a lot of Holliston players and hopefully a few Hopkinton ones as well. Of course, uh, you'll have some Ashland players mixed in there. Leone deals, and this is going to take a couple hops up the middle, and it is going to take an awkward hop by the shortstop Burdick. Runner waved around third, and that is going to be a Holliston run. So Kevin Quinn is going to have the RBI single. I'm giving that a single. That just took an awkward hop around Burdick. I don't think there was any uh, error on that play. Timmy's father's here, uh, Tom. Give him, a, give him a hit on that one. Absolutely. He made an aggressive charge at it, but just missed reading the hop. Lewis Rossi will step in, the left fielder. Hits to the opposite field, slash bunts, bunts. Doesn't drag bunt, though. A three to two game now. No outs in this top of the second. Bit of a slugfest going on here between these two teams to start things off. He only deals the bunt down the third base side. A nicely placed bunt, but a nicely placed third baseman to throw to first. They get the out, but the job is done as Quinn does advance to second. So a five to three out for Rossi on the bunt attempt, and that'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder. Let me get out of my homer mode here. I love the way that kid plays. He is a typical dirt dog. He walked his first time up and stole a couple bases and scored a run. Dangerous, dangerous hitter. Line up and the pitch. That one is low. Nicely done by Rankatori to keep it in front. Of course, Drew Rankatori also a talented basketball player. The catcher for the Hillers. Coach Simos told me that Alex Reynolds, you'll see him around working with Drew on his blocking and receiving. As this is hit in the air to left field, that drops down for a hit. Quinn being waved around third, and he will score easily. The game is tied at three as Ben Thomas is safe at second with a double. Did they have some more trouble out there? A little bit. Ball was tailing away off the left-hander's bat, so you got to factor that in. Burdick went out for the first cut, and Glassburn went out for the second cut. So an RBI double for Ben Thomas, and Danny Radowitz will come up to the plate. A three to three game. Tommy's really got to vary his look with Thomas on third base. Leone deals, that one upstairs. No action as of yet for the Hillers in the bullpen area. Leone working from the stretch. Thomas over at second with a big lead. The check-in, runner slides back, but the throw gets away. But Thomas not able to get up in time to take off. He had a slide back to the bag, was taking a massive lead there. Already 10 steals on the season for Ben Thomas. He already stole third once today. I'm not sure, and I'll have to find out later whether that pick was called from Coach Simos or Rancatori called for it. Or Leone just did it on his own. Leone from the stretch. And there's a strike, runner taking off for third, and the throw is going to go off the glove of Kessler, look like, and roll in a left field, but Thomas does pick up the stolen base. His third of the game, 11th of the season. Second time he swiped third base. I don't know what he sees in Tommy's delivery. And he has a jersey just full of dirt. A lot of sliding for Ben Thomas, but he has slid safely every time. 
Swinging strike, Leone with a nice breaking pitch there to get by Radowitz, one and two. Radowitz at a 333 on the season, he's a junior. Three for nine overall. Heading into this game, now three for 10. That one's fouled away, one and two. His first at bat I thought was a little bit of a mismatch with Tommy's fastball. That was the first of two strikeouts of the day for Leone. Swinging strike and there is K number three for Leone. K number two for Radowitz. I'll bring up Tim Ringi. It's also out number two for Holliston. Ringi hit a single his last time up, an RBI single, which drove in Ben Thomas, also stole a bag. Leone deals. And this is up the third base side, foul, 0-1. The Panthers employ the uh, two adult coaches method. Hopkinton has uh, one player down at first base, Keith Vera down at third. Leone working from the stretch. There's a nice pitch for strike two. If he only had that change up, this would be deadly. He's sitting on fastball. The 0-2. And this is hit in the air, foul out of play. That one heading over to the woods to our left. A lot of those woods have uh, <laughs> been knocked down. Looks like there's some serious uh, construction going on there. Well, it's going to cut down the cost of balls for sure. Absolutely. Uh, that is fouled off. The battle continues on. 0-2 remains the count. Looked like a curveball. Hard one. Leone from the stretch. Runner with a slight lead off of third. It's Ben Thomas over at third. That one's chipped foul. Good battle here once again between Tim Ringy and Tom Leone. Tim Ringy was at a 318 batting average heading into this game, but he is one for one today. Leone looks at third and deals. And that was a nice pitch, but just inside, according to the home plate umpire, one and two. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but uh, I think Ringy should be heading back to the dugout. I don't know what was wrong with that pitch. Leone deals on the ground up the third base side, picked up the throw over is in time. And that is out number three of the top of the second, but the Holliston Panthers tie things up. It is three to three as we head to the bottom of the second. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, eight, nine, and one due up for the Hillers. Tim Burdick to start things off. Connor Hebert, the left fielder up next, and Ben McKenzie, the leadoff hitter and DH, due up third this inning. Coach Santos has already sent two, two guys down in the bullpen already. As this is hit in the air by Burdick, got a good piece of it. That's going to drop in for his first hit of the season. And he is now 1 for 12 at the plate. But that is a nice start to the bottom of the second for the Hillers as Connor Hebert will step in. This game tied up at three apiece. The Hillers on the bottom of the first played at three runs, but Holliston responded with a couple of their own in the top of the second. Burdick leading off the bag, wind up and the pitch from Ward. This is hit high in the air over to right field, ranging over is Thomas. He'll make the catch. That's out number one as Burdick heads back to first. Thomas thought, thought about throwing behind Timmy. He just didn't have the room. 
That'll bring up Ben McKenzie, the designated hitter. He hit a single to start things off in the bottom of the first. And he also scored the first Hiller's run of the game. That was off a Tommy Ambersoni RBI double. I told you he wanted to wear a kilt during the season, before the season. He got into an argument with Coach Simos, didn't I? I'll fill you in a little bit later. You'll have to fill me in on that one. He has an unusual sense of humor, Ben, but we'll get into it a little bit. Ben McKenzie now 13 for 30 overall at the plate. As that one's fouled away, 0-2. Oh Is that a 4-14 heading into this game? And he is expected to do big things all season long at the top of this lineup. They had his glove in center field and move Ambersoni over to left field. It's a piece of this one up the middle, slow roller picked up by the shortstop, throw to second for one, throw to first, and not in time, but they do get the lead runner two away. So McKenzie reaches on the six to four fielder's choice, and that'll bring up Ambersoni. Coach Simos wants to play this year basically base to base. He's not gonna be big on sacrificing or anything like that. Tommy Ambersoni at a 250 heading into this game. As the lefty steps in and awaits the pitch. Fouled away. Coach Simos also stressing aggressive base running, being heads up on the bases, taking the extra base when you can. Well, so far for Owen Ward, a much cleaner inning in this bottom of the second than the first. Wind up and the pitch runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be off the mark and a stolen bag for McKenzie. Pretty good uh, throw by Jouette, just a little bit too far to the right. But some good power on it. He hurts his pop time because his front foot goes over home plate as opposed to staying behind home plate. Extra tenth of a second here, tenth of a second there makes all the difference between whether you're out or safe. One and two on Ambersoni. Ambersoni had the RBI double that allowed the Hillers to score their first run of the game. McKenzie came around to score. That one upstairs. Ward hasn't shown his move yet, if he has one. So I think uh, Coach Simos has noticed that. And McKenzie with a big lead over there at second. And this one is popped up into the air, over to center field, and ranging under to make the catch is Seymour. And that'll retire the side. On the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. It's Hollison three, it's Hopkinton three. You're tuned in to Hillers Baseball on HCAN. Heading in to the bottom, or excuse me, the top of the third inning as the Holliston Panthers will come back up to the plate. Due up is four, five, and six as you're getting a nice look here at the crowd behind home plate. Nice new set of stands and a Nice foundation installed behind home plate as part of the renovations here at the Hopkinton Hillers baseball field to honor Tommy McIntyre. As Seymour gets a piece of this one, that'll drop in into left field for a base hit. A leadoff single for the center fielder here in the top of the third. Score is tied at three. Sean Jouette, the catcher, due up next. I think Holliston's got the book on Tommy. Fastball, fastball, fastball. He's got to mix in a little bit more off-speed stuff. Chew with a free swinger. We'll see what the leash is with Tom Leone if he runs into any struggles here. Hillers did have some warm-up action as this is on the ground third base side. That's going to get past the dive of Burdick. And Seymour's going to stop at second, so it'll be two on, no outs. A single for Jouette. He'll bring up Jack Larsh, the third baseman. Halston trying to get on another rally here. Seymour can make some trouble out there 
at second base with his speed. So Timmy Burdick has got to keep him close. Leone from the stretch. And it's a bunt up the third base side, a nicely placed bunt, slow roller, throw to first, and that is just in time. But the job is done as Seymour pushes up to third, Jouette up to second. Pesson had a nice hit his last time up. One away, and Zach Pesson, the first baseman, do up. Yeah, it was a nice double, ended up scoring a run on the Kevin Quinn single. That was the second Holliston run of the game. And then it was Ben Thomas that tied things up with an RBI double for the Panthers. That one down low, briefly gets by Rankatori, but able to keep it in front of him. One out, two on for Holliston here in the top of the third. A 3-3 game. Looks over at third and is set to deal. Line up in the pitch. And this is tattooed in a left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. Alston gonna take the lead as Brad Seabor around to score. It's a 4-3 game in favor of the Panthers. An RBI single for Zach Pesson. He's two for two on the day. Coach Simos is gonna make a little trip. Sean Jouett pushes up to third and we might see a new pitcher here. will indeed take the ball from Tom Leone. So Leone able to go two and a third. And we will have a new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. And the new pitcher is gonna be Jack Breslin coming in for Tom Leone. And we will give you some more details about the change after we take a quick break. You are tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Continuing on in the top of the third, Jack Breslin taking over duties for Tom Leone, who struggled a bit through two and a third. Tom Leone lasting a two and a third, giving up four runs, all of them earned eight hits and had three strikeouts. As Kevin Quinn, the second baseman, steps in. Two runners on, one out. And he gets a piece of this one into left field and caught by Heber, two away. And both runners will stay put. Jouette thought about tagging, but ended up turning around. I thought Connor got a little bit confused with the number of outs there. Hesitated a bit, but didn't cost the Hillers anything. I'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the left fielder. Good contact kit. Will the Holliston coach send Pesson? Very possible, he does have a good lead off of first. Line up in the pitch, that one is low. Gets by Rankatori, the runner from third, gonna try to score, and he will. Sean Jouette crosses home plate on the wild pitch. And it's five to three, Holliston. Pushing up to second is Pesson. Oh, a rough break there for the Hillers. Up and the pitch. There's a called strike from Breslin. Jack Breslin, a multi sport athlete. Seven ERA on the season, but doesn't have too much work out there on the mound. He's out of the class of the 2014 Williamsport District 11 champion team. And only an inning of work for Breslin. He Gave up a run in that inning, faced seven batters. That one is down low, gets by Regatory again, and advancing to third on the pass ball is Pesson. I think you got, got to uh, fault the catcher for that one. He's got to learn, he's still a young kid. Yep. Can't expect him to be Alex Reynolds right away. It's not an easy job, that's for sure. Line up in the pitch, outside. Speaking of Alex, did you happen to see uh, Nesson, a quick, where he was catching. Yeah, uh, I did. It was all over, uh, I didn't see it on uh, Nesson, but it was all over uh, Facebook. Catching. Uh, catching for a couple of the Red Sox pitchers. Kimbrel. Catching Kimbrel. 
You mentioned that uh, he's never caught a ball that hard. His hands didn't hurt, which he expected them to, but his breaking ball was so nasty he had trouble following it. Well, that is certainly a good experience, that's for sure. And he caught Stephen Wright, too. So that's a whole different animal right there. Oh, absolutely. That is not easy to catch a knuckleballer, especially a major league knuckleballer. Lewis Rossi drew the walk. Ben Thomas at the plate. The dangerous Ben Thomas. And he rips this one up the middle, takes a couple hops, picked up by the shortstop Burdick, throw to second, no problem. They get the force out. And no more harm done in the top of the third, but Halston does play two runs. It's five to three as we head to the bottom of the third. It's Hopkins and Hillers baseball on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning, three, four, and five do up for the Hillers. Zach Sosicki to start things off, followed by Anthony Farina and Ryan Kester to face Owen Ward in his third inning of work. As this is hit in the air over to shallow left, and that's going to get by the reach of Radowitz, and Sosicki is aboard at first. Radowitz made the wrong turn off a of lefty's bat. He's supposed to head towards third base. He went towards second, and the ball tailed over his head. Zach Sasitsky now two for two on the day. I'm giving that a hit. You got to give him a hit. Absolutely. He's one of the captains. Got to give him a hit. <laughs> Slate lead off of first for Sasitsky. There's ball one, two for Rena. Our umpires this afternoon behind home plate, it's Steve Gatewood. And on the base is Tim McDonald. Anthony Farina will be heading down to Providence College and become a friar come September. And he hits this one high in the air over to shallow center, ranging in to make the catch is Seymour. And Sosinski will stay put at first. One got, away. Got to like that hustle from Jewett running down, trailing the runner all the way down the first base line, just in case Seymour wanted to throw. Very disciplined team for sure as Ryan Kester steps in. Coach Simos really likes this kid. Going to work on his defense, but he's hitting the ball well. 0-1 for Ryan Kester. Ward working from the stretch. There has been continuous warm-up action for Holliston as well in case Ward runs into any struggles. Sasitsky thought about taking off as the pitch nearly got by Jouette, but nicely done behind home plate. Sosinski heads back to first. Believe it or not, Larry, Legion Baseball will be starting up in about four weeks. I did speak to uh, Richard Powell, the GM, the other day. And this is crushed over to center field, but it is playable, ranging back to make the catch is Seymour. And Sosinski will head back to first. He's looking for ball players. I told him to send Steve Simos an email. They're having a tryout this Sunday. He's looking to have some more representation from Hopkinton. We gotta steal some of the Milford guys. No, that's <laughs> not gonna happen. Or I mean, some of the Hopkinton guys that play on Milford. Well, I don't think there'll be too many this year. As this is hit high in the air over to shallow center field. Might be difficult, but it is caught as ranging all the way over from second base is Kevin Quinn. And that will be the third out of the bottom of the third. We'll head to the top of the fourth. It's Holliston five, Hopkinton three. You're tuned in to Hillers Baseball on HCAM. Top of the fourth inning, due up for Holliston, two, three, and four. Danny Radowitz, Tim Ringy, and Brad Seymour to face Jack Breslin, who came in to relieve Tom Leone after Leone pitched two and a third. All five runs for Holliston were credited to Leone. As Radowitz set to step in, he is 0 for 2 so far today. Struck out both times he faced Leone. As Breslin delivers inside, 1 0. He's got to nibble the corners too and stay out of the middle part of the plate. Hopefully, he can get that done this inning. Allen's fouled into the backstop, 1 and 1. 
It's nice to see the Marloni family here, grandparents of Luke DeLoya, father and mother of Lou Marloni, oh. Framingham's own. That one inside. You see Lou over there too? No, Lou, Lou's <laughs> too busy to come down to high school baseball games. He's doing his thing over at EEI probably right now. That one's Ten to two away. with Glenn Ordway and Christian Fauri. <laughs> but they but they do support their grandchildren. I've never seen a a grandparent couple that uh, attends more games than they have over the years. It's always a great thing. The 2-2 pitch to Radowitz. And that's foul up the third base side. Third base coach there trying to make a play. The, I believe that's the head coach for Holliston over there. Getting razzed by the uh, players inside the dugout. He almost had that too. Got to give him credit. He ain't wearing a glove. And that is chipped foul. I think Radowitz was just trying to poke that in the right field. Very defensive. He was no match for Tommy Leone who blew fastballs by him. Breslin gets the sign he likes and deals. Fouled away. Another one. Tim Ringy do up next. Ringy had a RBI single in the first inning that scored the first Holliston run. Line up in the pitch and that is fouled away. Hillers have a game away tomorrow, Saturday, down in Windsor, Connecticut. He'd already played one down in West Haven, Connecticut and came up on the short end. Yeah, they're doing a bit of traveling this year. Traveling club. Good team they're supposed to face down there. So pitching's at a premium. And this is ripped into left field, but positioned in the right spot is Connor Heber to make the catch. One away, that'll bring up Tim Ringy. The righty steps in and awaits the pitch. Breslin deals outside. His nickname is Jerry for some reason. I just don't understand it. But that's what the kids have nicknamed him or what he likes to be called. Jack Breslin? Yeah. Jerry. Huh. He's got a little bit of an unusual do underneath that cap. It's fouled into the backstop. One and one. He's got more hair than I, I have, that's for sure. I won't even say anything to you there, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that one outside, two and one. Try to snap off a breaking ball there. Breslin deals, that one in the dirt, three and one. Brad Seymour, the cleanup man, do up next. Seymour's having a good day, he's two for two with a run. deals and this is hit into left field that's going to get down for a deep base hit Ringy around first heading over to second the throw in and Ringy is aboard with a one out double that'll bring up Brad Seymour oh, a good piece of hitting there by Ringy put that one into the deep part of left field it rolled all the way up the hill a little bit. Here comes trouble. Alston trying to get back on the rally once again. And this is the part of the order they want up right now. Runner with a big lead off of second. Breslin deals a fastball. And there's a strike. A little bit of a slide step for Breslin. Certainly got to keep an eye on Ringy over at second. He already stole third once today, back in the first inning. Big lead. This one up high. One and one. Breslin from the street. 
stretch, weighs the side. He deals, and this is hit in the air by Seymour Foul. One and two. You got amazing vision, Tim. You call that foul? Yep. I don't even think the camera could pick that up. <laughs> you are really, really good. I could see through dugouts. Amongst other things. <laughs> got my x-ray glasses on. That's right. Runner continuing to take a big lead off of second as Breslin deals down low. Two and two. Rumor has it Brendan Kelly will get an inning tomorrow as if a bullpen session down in Windsor, Connecticut. Breaking pitch just outside, full count. Simo was tempted to go at that. Yeah, had some nice movement. Full count on the cleanup man. Breslin gets the sign he likes. Ringy with a big lead off of second. That one down low, it's gonna get by Rankatori, an easy advance for Ringy, and a walk for Seymour. So that'll put runners on the corners with one out. Sean Jouette, the catcher at the plate. He's one for two with a single, also scored a run in the third. Well, here's the situation. You get some blazing speed down at first base. You got one out, and you haven't seen Jack's move at all. Yep. And there's a lead by Seymour, and Seymour's going to take off, and a smart move by Rankatori holding the ball. You know, as soon as he threw it, Ringi was going to take off for home plate. Yeah, with a guy on third, I don't think you uh, want to throw over to first in that situation, but now Brad Seymour going to take a massive lead off of second. Trying to draw a throw over from Breslin. Time called. I don't know if that was on Jewett or whether that was on Rankatori. Either way, time is out. Time is in. And out is fouled away, 0-2 on Sean Jewett. Breslin from the stretch. Runners on second and third. That one is low, one and two. I don't know, one thing you must avoid in this situation is throwing any kind of wild pitch. Because with the speed over at second, it could lead to maybe even two runs. Hit in the air over to center field and arranging in to make the catch is Amber Sony and the runners will stay put. Nicely done, two away. See Zach Sisiski getting the cut where Peston should have had a cut for the Panthers and wasn't there, allowing him to run the score. So Zach was right where he was supposed to be. Coach Simos prides himself every year on having good defense and not making mental mistakes. Well, that was such a strong part of the team last year was their defense. Breslin deals that one down low to Larsh. We didn't see too many circus innings last year. It was solid all the way around. Yeah, some very good pitching as well. 1-0 count. Inside, 2-0. Well, you wonder if he's Pretty much just going to give Larsh the free pass here. Try to sucker him into swinging for a pitch outside or inside with first base empty. There's a strike, two and one. He showed his curveball right there. Larsh wasn't having anything of it. Zach Pesson do up next if Larsh is able to reach. That one outside, it gets by Rankatori, but the runners will stay put. Rankatori was very quick to reach behind him to get that one. 
Nicely done. Brazil was right on top of the plate, so it would have been a very close play had he taken off from third, run into the third out. 3-1 pitch. There's a strike, full count. He's had him looking at a couple breaking pitches. Now he's just gonna stay out of the fat part of the plate. Breslin from the stretch. That one down low, and that is going to be a walk for Larch. Second walk of the inning by Breslin, and it's now bases loaded, two outs. Zach Pesson, the first baseman at the plate, he's two for two today. A double in the second and a single in the third, an RBI single in the third. He's hit the ball hard. Certainly has. Big opportunity here for Holliston. As Breslin working from the stretch. Bases full of Panthers. On the ground, up the middle, picked up at short, throw to second, they get the force out. And that'll wrap up the top of the fourth. Well, Holliston loads up the bases, but no harm done. We'll head to the bottom of the inning. It's Holliston five, Hopkinton three. You're tuned into Hiller's Baseball on H-Camp. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for the Hillers, seven, eight, and nine. As the wind continuing to blow around here at Hopkinton High School, Cole Glassburn steps in the left-handed batter's box and awaits the pitch for, from Owen Ward. And there's a strike. The Hillers have been held scoreless since plating three in the first. Cole Glassburn, Tim Burdick, then Connor Hebert due up for Hopkinton. War deals, fouled away. Coach Simos likes his aggressive stick. He was playing some shortstop this year, and they needed to solidify the middle of the infield, so they moved him over a second, and brought in Timmy Burdick to play short. And this is up the first base side, slow roller, picked up by the first baseman, Zach Peston, no problem, a three unassisted, four out number one. Bring up Tim Burdick, the shortstop, who's one for one on the day. Singled in the second inning. Hillers certainly need to get something going offensively here, trailing by two. But Owen Ward has been pretty solid throughout the second and third innings and now into the fourth. That one upstairs, 1-0. But they've had that bullpen go on the whole game since the first inning. Coach Santos. Yeah, I think they're at a point where one more struggle by Ward and they might go to that bullpen. 2 0. Ben McKenzie in the hole. Connor Hebert on deck. Ward didn't like the. First sign likes this one and deals. That's fouled off the umpire's face mask, I believe. But he seems to be okay. Two and one. Owen Ward, the pitcher for Holliston, a junior. He has pitched 10 innings coming into this game, a 420 ERA. Gave up 15 hits, nine runs, six of those earned after facing 49 batters. I think Owen Ward is going to be a pitcher that Holliston relies on heavily as we go throughout this season. That one outside, three and one. He yanked that pitch, it was way outside. Ward set to deliver. Fouled away, full count. Timmy being very aggressive at the plate. Not trying to beg for a walk up there. Wind really picking up now. <laughs> the hot dog wrapper. Got a hurricane going on here at uh, Hopkinton High School. Good crowd down the left field bleacher area.
Looks like he's going to go for a curveball. He deals, and there's strike three. Got him looking. He tips his pitches. That's just what he threw him. He tilts his glove off to the side when it's curved. He's trying to grab for stitches. And when he's vertical with that glove, it's a fastball. Like here, it's a fastball. That is an impressive observation. 1-0. Oh. I am impressive, and that's why I got a raise this year. I see one of the alumni from last year's semifinal. We did. We, we, we put power in the budget for you. <laughs> The 1 0 pitch. How about a Frankfurter? That's what I need. That's pushing it. 2 0. Oh. Maybe we could get a mini snappy dogs here for us. Right, bring it on the whole, the whole house. So Ben McKenzie was going to get this, uh, this kilt, orange and green kilt. And he maintained that he could run faster with the kilt because of the resistance of the air and he'd create a tailwind as the as the wind was going through. And this wind maybe is that's ripped down the left side but foul two and two on Hebert. And this went on and on and finally Coach Simo said, no, you can't wear a kilt or you'll be down the end of the bench. So okay. he wanted to wear that in the game. He, yeah, he thought he'd be a lot faster than he is. So like I said, he's got a little unusual sense of humor but Threatened with being pined, he decided to go with what the coach said. Maybe next year he'll get to wear that kilt since he'll be a senior. That is an senior. interesting theory. Right. You know, he's going to go to Williams or Amherst, one of the top schools in the country, so he's a thinker. Very creative. Full count on Hebert. And this is ripped into left field and over the reach of Lewis Rossi. Rounding first over to second is Hebert, and he thought about third, but will turn back. And it's a stand-up double for the left fielder with two outs. Speaking of the kilt wearer. Here he is. This is the guy you want up right now with a guy on second. Ben McKenzie, the DH. He's one for two today. Hit into a fielder's choice his last time up in the second. Playing kind of shallow in center field for Ben. Like I mentioned earlier, he hit a car out in center field. And gets a piece of this one, crush over to center field, and that is out of here. Home run, Ben McKenzie, tie game. See if you had that kilt on? You have some dust blowing up on the infield? <laughs> he, that's almost the exact spot he hit his other home run the other day. Well, he certainly doesn't need a kilt to hit bombs. A two-run homer for Ben McKenzie. Connor Hebert around to score. Coach, and McKenzie. Coach Santos is peering out to the mound. He wants to see whether his bullpen is uh, ready, but he's got bases empty. See what happens. Rissoni at the plate. 1-0. and oh. He absolutely crushed that ball. Didn't have a chance. Oh, yeah. Seymour's fast, he's not that fast. He's Bunt. not that tall. That's fouled away, one and one. So with the loss of Dawson McMillan this year, who I certainly appreciated watching for many, many years. Lost a leadoff hitter, good club man. That was uh, Ben McKenzie's second home run of the season, by the way, and a team fourth home run. Oh, Tommy Amorcino looks like his uh, Stock and trade here is the, the bunt. That one's fouled away by Ambersoni. Two and two. Got a full house down here today. You certainly do. You can't ask for better weather than this. Little after, <laughs> after you know what? Right, after that horrible April. And this is hit into the air over to center field and caught by Seymour, but the Hillers tie things up. A two-run homer from Ben McKenzie makes it 5-5 five to five as we head in to the top of the fifth. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers baseball on HCAN. Top of the fifth inning, and 
we have ourselves a ball game. It's Holliston 5, Hopkinton 5. Two up for Holliston, 8, 9, and 1. Kevin Quinn, Lewis Rossi, and Ben Thomas. A two-run homer for the Hillers by Ben McKenzie ties things up. A blast to center field as Breslin continuing to work out there on the mound. That pitch up high, 1-0. and oh. Almost hit, beamed him in the head. Yep. Breslin gets the sign he likes and deals. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it is caught by Hebert, one away. The wind aided that one. Didn't, didn't aid Ben McKenzie's shot. He turned the win around. Yep. I'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the left fielder. Pesky. You hate this kid if he's playing a po opposite you, but if he's on your team, you love him. Yep, very good uh, all-around ball player. I'm sure we'll see him uh, for Ashland Legion this year. I like him better then. Now one inside, one and oh. Uh, Lily Morningstar just pulled up. Another outside pitch, 2-0. Oh. Great softball player, basketball player. Unfortunately, has a torn ACL and won't be back in action until next year. Yeah, that was certainly a tough loss for the basketball team as they went all the way to the state championship and played a close game with Foxborough, nearly pulling it out, 2-1. And, and here she is today riding around on the athletic director's cart. <laughs> VIP treatment, well deserved. Right. As Lewis Rossi steps back in. Two one pitch. Last year there was absolutely no fan support, and now you get the pavilion filled up. You get the left field bleachers and overflow capacity, and Lewis Rossi at the plate. And a three one pitch. Grabs the outside corner. Full count. Well, it's just a much more. Pleasant place to watch a ball game now with the stands behind home plate and plenty of area to set up the chairs as this is on the ground. Picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Two away, four to three goes Rossi. Easy play for Glassburn, a nice grass cutter. Didn't have to read much, just. I'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder. Oh, missed a trouble today. Yep. He's uh, one for two with a walk and three stolen bases and an RBI. The best he can do is hit a solo homer. That's at the very best. Breslin has stayed out of trouble this inning. I'm sure Coach Simos has somebody warming down the bullpen. This is the longest he's went. Yep. 0-1. Well, maybe they're going to test him out and see if he has uh, starter capabilities. Well, he's got capabilities, but he hasn't been stretched out yet so far. So well, He's pitching in solid uh, so far in this inning. So after getting out of that bases loaded jam last inning, got to leave him in until he struggles, I think. One and well, one. Might, might bring in Scirocco, perhaps. Things get a little close. And this is hit in high in the air over to right field. Farina ranging back and making the catch. And one, two, three, they go. In the top of the fifth to the bottom of the fifth we go. It is tied at five between Hopkinton and Holliston. This is Hiller's baseball on HCAM. Welcome back to Hopkinton High School. Bottom of the fifth inning, due up for the Hillers, three, four, and five. Zach Sosiski, Anthony Farina, Ryan Kester. And they will face a new pitcher for Holliston. It is John Pesson out there to throw for the Panthers. And of course, uh, Jonathan Pesson was also on the Ashland Legion squad. Line up and the pitch from Pesson. This is ripped in a right field, but it is a great catch by the second baseman. Kevin Quinn jumping up out of nowhere to pull it down. Got a decent fastball, not overpowering. A little bit of curve. He's not in love with it like his brother, but he's serviceable. 
One away, and Anthony Farina will step in. And Anthony might service his pitch. Services it in the backstop, 0-1. I think he was swinging for more than a single there. Jonathan Pesson, a 4.42 ERA on the season. That one down low. One and one. He has pitched six and a third. Andrew Scirocco warming up in the Hiller's bullpen. He's made three appearances, facing 32 batters. And he is a junior for the Holliston Panthers as Pesson deals low there. Two and one to for Farina. Anthony Farina 0 for 2 so far on the day. Very nice kid, if you like kids. <laughs> the 2-1 inside. He was thinking about becoming the triumvirate with his two brothers who went to Texas TCU, home of Andy Dalton, I think. Wow. They decided on Providence College, which made his mom Sandy and dad John very happy. I'm sure it did. With the checkbook. Nice and close <laughs> in a great city as well. And he'll draw the walk there. He does like steak, though, Anthony. He's going to have to get used to some pasta down in Providence. Well, they got plenty of good steak down there, too. As Ryan Kester steps in. That's the home of the place, steak place that begins with a C. That's now all over the country. There's a strike, 0 oh and 1. Ryan Kester was at a 350 batting average heading into this game. 7 for 20, he's 0 for 2 today. That one outside, one and one. I see Brendan Kelly poking his head out. Maybe making a pinch hitting appearance. No, it won't be next. Rankatori is over there in the cleanup spot. Or the on deck spot, I mean. That pitch up high, runner thought about taking off, but will quickly turn back around. A good throw up the pipe by Jouet. Two and one. You know, Anthony isn't known for his base stealing ability, but he is a smart base runner. See what kind of move the young Pesson child has. Swinging strike, oh. and the runner is now caught as Jouette quickly throws it up to second, and it, fortunately for Farina, the second baseman dropped it, so he is able to go back to first safely. And that was nearly an out there. I'd give an error to the shortstop for bobbling that ball. But I don't know how you'd score it. I'm not going to bother. Okay. <laughs> Didn't really have an impact, at least for right now. If Farina scores, well, I guess you could say it had an impact. And there's a strike. Got Kester looking two away. It'll bring up Drew Rankatori. I wonder whether with two out, he would pinch hit for Glassburn and put Whaley at second base, still on the bench. John Pesson from the stretch runner taking off from first. Juet throws up, and it is going to be in time. Caught stealing is Farina. And that'll wrap up the bottom of the fifth. To the top of the sixth we go. Holliston and Hopkinton knotted at five on HCAN. Here comes Rankatori. He'll throw it down. Top half of the sixth inning. Holliston coming back up to the plate. Two, three, and four do up. Danny Radowitz, Tim Ringe, and Brad Seymour to face Jack Breslin, who has had a very solid relief appearance since coming in to the game in the third inning for Tom Leone. And he's going to try to continue that here into the sixth as we are tied up at five. I have a fin funny feeling Kester will be playing in. It's creeping in from third. 
Line up in the pitch, down the third base side. That is going to be a base hit. And Radowitz is safely bored over at first as he rips that one right down the line. That'll bring up Tim Ringy. Maybe if he had taken one less step in, it would have been in his glove. Tim Ringi having a good day at the plate. He's two for three. Singled in the first, doubled in the fourth. Also has an RBI and a stolen base to his credit. Checking at first, that throw a little high. Good pull down by Sosicki. It's certainly a benefit for the Hillers to have a reliable first baseman with the height of Zach Sosicki. He didn't snow cone it, he got it right in the webbing. And this is Fouled up the left side, 0 and 1. I think Simos is seeing what these Austin hitters are doing. Well, you wonder what the leash is here with Jack Breslin, and I is, think it'll be short. I believe this is short. the longest he's gone all season. If I'm not mistaken. For those of you just joining us, an exciting game between the Hopkinton Hillers and Holliston Panthers so far. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett on the call. Bob Hamilton on camera. One and one count on Tim Ringy. Game tied at five apiece. Breslin from the stretch. Inside, nice stop by Rankatori. Well, he buried that curveball in the dirt. Simos is asking whether Scirocco is ready. The 2-1. Swinging strike. That was a nasty breaking pitch. 2-2. Two and two. Rydowitz doesn't appear to be a threat to steal here. A slight lead over there at first. That one chipped foul. He had him way out in front of that. Scirocco's done very well in his outings. I don't know what the book says, but the kids tell me he's doing really, really well. Sat out last year. This is hit high in the air over to shallow right field. Could be trouble, and that is going to drop down. The throw to second is Going to be in time. They got the lead runner. So I guess you could technically score that maybe a fielder's choice. Well, yeah, it would be a fielder's choice, I guess. Well, an eight to four fielder's choice, is that reasonable? One away. Well, it's a fielder's choice. He could have gone, could have thrown the first, couldn't he? Right. So Ringy is aboard on the Fielder's choice, but that was a great play. It looked like that one was going to be trouble as it was going towards the empty spot in right center. I believe it was the center fielder who was quickly able to get there, uh, Tommy Ambersoni. Seem was been a tough out all day. Breslin deals, swinging strike there by Brad Seymour, who's two for two today with a walk. Also has a run and a stolen base to his credit. Panthers were sitting all over Tommy Leone's fastball today, which was the middle. Checking out first, runner back safe. And Breslin is showing some different speed here. They're very anxious hitters, the Holliston Panthers. Breslin set to deal. Time called. That was just a, I know you're there kind of look. Bunt pulled back, runner taking off from first. Throw to second is nearly perfect, and it's perfect enough to get the runners trying to steal as Tim Ringy mowed down by Drew Rankatori, and that was a great throw. Can't 
Can't get any better than that, Larry. No. Nope. I'm sure he's happy as heck about that. The so it's the coach. The 0-2, that's sliced foul. What's the acro acronym? Uh, SMH. That's what I think the uh, Holliston players are saying about Breslin. I'm sure. The 0-2. Allen Low, one and two. Well, if Breslin gets through this inning, that'll be three and two thirds. That is a rock solid relief appearance. Swinging strike, and that is gonna be out number three, but he'll have to throw it out to first, and he will in time. Nicely done by Rankatori. Drew Rankatori, the MVP of that top of the sixth. It is five to five as we head to the bottom of the inning. It's Hopkinton Hillers baseball in H can. Bottom of the sixth inning, six, seven, and eight do up for the Hillers. Drew Rankatori stepping in now, and then it looks like Brennan Kelly might pinch hit for Cole Glassburn, and then Tim Burdick will bat third in the inning. A five to five ball game. John Pesson out there for another inning of relief for the Holliston Panthers. He came in to start the fifth. And pitched a solid inning. Strike one to Rankatori, who is having a great day behind home plate. Tremendous top of the inning. Rankatori with two big plays. One got, sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Well, one to catch a runner stealing, and then a great throw down the line on the strikeout to end the inning. As you were saying, Larry. Yeah, the, they have the uh, young monk. On the uh, on deck circle, three sports star Brendan Kelly. That one's outside, two and one. Coach Simos is going to rely heavily on Brendan Kelly this year. So, and this is hit in the air and caught by the ranging second baseman Kevin Quinn, one away. Nicely done by Quinn. And it'll bring up Brendan Kelly stepping in. The left-handed batter's box for Cole Glassburn. Glassburn will probably re-enter. More than likely, he's having a good day at second base. Passing set the deal. That one outside. Well, what do you think the role of uh, Brennan Kelly will be this season? Ride him hard. As many innings as you can get out of him. Steve Simos is going to try and. And he gets a piece of this one over to right field and caught by Ben Thomas. Thomas had a range a long way to his right, but is able to do so two away. We saw a lot of that the last summer with Thomas. Certainly did. He could cover a lot of ground. Bring up Tim Burdick, the shortstop. Burdick one for two on the day. Timmy won't get cheated up at the plate. Pesson deals. That one down low. Well, a great battle between these two TVL rivals who are, are at the top of the standings. Battle as advertised, five to five here in the bottom of the sixth. That one down low. Timmy's going to uh, Boston College to be an Eagle. Wow. He's heading down to see his brother Christopher last year's captain. So he's going to double trouble down on so, so Chestnut Hill. He'll get a chance to uh, play the Red Sox in spring training. Oh no, Chris! Chris is uh, at the school of management. Ah. He's hung up his cleats. I see. But nice to have a brother on campus to show you the ropes. Certainly. 2-1 pitch. This hit high in the air along the left side in foul territory. And it'll drop 2-2. Two and two. Well, Connor Hebert's on deck. He's going to be a Terp, Tom. Now, University Maryland. of Maryland. Business school, a Terrapin, right with Scott Zolak, an 
alumni. Pass and deals. This hit high in the air above the shortstop. He'll range a little bit to his right, make the catch. One, two, three, they go. In the bottom of the sixth to the top of the seventh we go. It's Hopkinton five, Holliston five. It's Hopkinton Aylers baseball on H cam. Top of the seventh inning, due up for Holliston, five, six, and seven. Sean Jouet, Jack Larsh, and Zach Pesson. Jack Breslin out there for another inning of work. After getting through the sixth, facing only three batters, as Tim Ringe was caught stealing, which certainly helped uh, momentum continue to shift towards the Hillers. There's strike one on Jouette, who is one for three today. Singled and scored a run in the third. And he's done a nice job behind the plate, as usual, for Holliston. Gets a piece of this one down the third base side, and it's bobbled by the third baseman, Kester, and he will not be able to get the throw off. Jouette reaches on the error. I think Coach Simos is going to make a change. Yep, I did not imagine or, the leash was very long. Or just have a quick chat. Might just check up on him, see how he's doing, but it looks like he's taking the ball. A tremendous job in relief by Jack Breslin. Very good effort. Coming out now for the Hillers, it'll be we'll probably, Rob Pagliuca. Yeah, he throws a knuckle curve ball, something with funk. He's got a fastball and a knuckle ball. And we'll have more on the new pitcher for the Hillers after a short timeout. It's Hopkinton 5, Holliston 5. It's Hopkinton Hillers baseball on H cam. Continuing on in the top of the seventh, a new pitcher for the Hopkinton Hillers. It's Bob Pagliuca out there. He has a seven ERA overall. A little tough to handle. He throws, a, they say, a knuckle, knuckle curve ball with yeah. decent velocity. His fastball. He's only worked two innings. He's faced 10 batters, given up two runs. That one's fouled away by Larsh. 0 and 1. Runner on first for Holliston. No outs. Sean Jouette reached on an error, a bobble by Kester over at third. Coach Santos wants that runner at second base. Any way you can get him there. So if it's by bunt, it's by bunt. If he throws that knuckle curve, that may be real difficult. But it would also be difficult with, to catch by Rancatori. Pagliuca working from the stretch. That one ripped up the left side and foul. 0-2. Oh Scoreboard looks beautiful this year, doesn't it, Tom? It's, it does, it certainly does. I believe one of the sponsors for the rehab work here will be a uh, business that sells round things with holes in the middle that are very tasty. They serve coffee there as well. It's just a little hint for the viewers. Ah. Owen oh 2 check in at first, runner slides back safe. I know you're there. Pagliuca takes a long glare over at Jouette, leading off the bag at first, and deals. That one inside, and Larsh, I think, was trying to get it to uh, hit his jersey there. One and two. That was the knuckle. I think Larsh was a little confused when that came in. Certainly uh, some interesting movement on some of these breaking pitches. He didn't step off the back of the rubber, but he went to his mouth, but the umpires let him get away with it. Time was called. The one, two. And this is up the third base side, picked up by Kessler, throw to second for one, out of first. And Sosiski had a stretch off the bag, and that allows the runner to reach. One away, as Larsh reaches on the Six to four fielder's choice. 
Now bring up Zach Pesson. I gotta check with me, the architects five here. Five to four, fielder's choice. Gotta be at least six inches downhill. Runner leading off of first as Pagliuca set to deal. And this is hit high in the air along the left side and it is going to be caught, I believe. That was out of our view. The wind was blowing that towards the out of play area. And that was indeed caught for the second out. That'll bring up Kevin Quinn. Kevin Quinn is one for three on the day. Had an RBI single in the second. And he also scored a run himself. And that was on the Ben Thomas RBI double, which made it a three to three game at the time. Coach Simos is asking his outfielders to play no doubles. And a Drew Rankatory be careful with his throw. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle, picked up by the second baseman. Throw to first, no problem. Four to three, four out number three. And we will head to the bottom of the seventh. And the Hillers, if they're able to score a run, they could have their third straight walk off of the season. So you'll have to stay tuned and see if they can do it. Five to five, heading to the bottom of the inning on HCAM. Bottom of the seventh inning, a five to five ball game between the Holliston Panthers and the Hopkinton Hillers. Nine, one, and two do up for the Hillers. Connor Hebert, Ben McKenzie, and Tommy Ambersoni. And I think this is the part of the order you want up right now for the potential third straight walk off for the Hillers. And I believe we do have a new pitcher for Holliston as well coming in to relieve John Pesson. We'll get you the details in just a moment. As Connor Hebert steps in. Blessed with great speed. Anything on the ground will be trouble for the infielders. Owen Radcliffe is the new pitcher for Holliston. He is a sophomore. He just displayed a little umph that first pitch. Pitch outside, 2-0 and on Hebert. Well, pretty good uh, relief appearance by John Pesson. He went two innings, giving up no runs, no hits, and a walk. That's fouled into the backstop. Isn't that beautiful? You don't hear that metal sound on those balls hit. People Good. still get uh, behind there. A little whiplash. They think the ball's coming through the netting, but these 800-pound poles that are 22 feet high, nothing's getting through. Well, if Ben McKenzie was hitting, maybe. A pitch down low. Three and one. He's going to make sure it's his pitch to hit now that he's ahead in the count. Radcliffe set the deal. There's a strike. Oh, Connor seen it. He's seen his best stuff. I don't think he's going to drop a breaking ball in here. I'd be very surprised. Full oh, count. Connor's geared up. Radcliffe delivers. Fouled away. Good battle going on here between Connor Hebert and Owen Radcliffe. Radcliffe, uh, 156 ERA on the season. This is his fourth appearance. He's pitched nine innings coming into this game. Giving up two runs that were earned. Up the middle, and it's picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, is gonna get by, and that'll allow Connor Hebert to be safely aboard with Ben McKenzie coming to the plate, an errant throw. Drives me nuts when a runner doesn't turn their head to the right to see where the ball is. Here's Captain Kilt. Ben McKenzie stepping in. He had a two RBI home run in the bottom of the fourth to tie the game up at five. They gotta keep uh, Connor close because he's got deadly speed. 
And he gets a piece of this one over to left field, ranging back and it's gonna get over the head of Lewis Rossi. Heading over to third is Hebert and he will be stopped. A smart call there to stop Hebert at third. Why take the risk with no outs? But it is a double for Ben McKenzie, no outs for the Hillers. Connor's been known to run through stop signs. So everybody had the brakes up for him. Ben McKenzie in this game is three for four. Oh. Two runs scored, two RBIs, and a stolen base. You got a fast man on third, a suicide squeeze man at the plate. I don't know whether Coach Simels will do this two games in a row. He might. Tommy Ambersoni stepping in. The suicide squeeze is on, and that is foul, 0-1. Oh well, you won't try it again. Well, I mean, in this situation, you got to have the uh, infielders on the corners in. You'd imagine. That ball was riding a little bit of the chalk, so... Coach Simos with some nice advice for Ambersoni. It's the exact same thing he did the other day. He found himself in the third base coach's box, which is an unusual place for Coach Simos to be. So I know if the play is still on. Radcliffe deals upstairs. Almost looked like a pitch out. I agree. A lost start, the pitch out in high school baseball. One and one. Radcliffe working from the stretch. Runners on second and third after a double by Ben McKenzie. No outs inside. Two balls and a strike here. Yep. Zach Sasitsky do up next, but it looks like they may pinch hit for him. Line up in the pitch. Outside, three and one. Well, Steven Simos is on the on deck spot. If Amersino gets on, he could be the hero today. Bad shoulder and all. Upstairs, and there's a walk. In outfield to be outfield to be called in. And it will be Zach Sasitsky coming up to the plate. So perhaps. Steven Simos is going to hit for Anthony Farina. Sasitsky having a nice day, two for three at the plate with an RBI and a run scored. Jack Chance. played for uh, post 59 down in Milford last summer. Excellent job. Good hands, good back control. Took his walks when he had to. I'm sure he'll be back there this summer. Radcliffe from the stretch. And he gets a piece of this one. In the left field it goes, and here comes the winning run. Another walk-off for the Hopkinton Hillers. Their third straight walk-off. Unbelievable. Six to five. The Hillers defeat Holliston. What a game, Larry. Big Zelmo Beatty comes in in a clutch and lines that ball. And that is all she wrote. The Hopkinton Hillers improve to six and three on the season, and they knock the Holliston Panthers down to seven and three. An impressive win by the Hillers. We'll take a quick timeout, come back and close it out. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAN. The Hopkinton Hillers defeat the Holliston Panthers six to five. It is the third straight walk-off win for the Hopkinton Hillers. Pretty unbelievable. Let's take you through a quick recap of this one. In the top of the first, Holliston started off with a run. It was an RBI single by Tim Ringy to drive in Ben Thomas. And then on the bottom of the inning, the Hillers scored three runs of their own. 
a Tommy Ambersoni single drove in Ben McKenzie, and then Zach Sasitsky followed up with an RBI single to drive in Ambersoni, and then Drew Rankatori with an RBI single to drive in Sasitsky made it three to one, and Hollison would quickly tie it up in the top of the second. An RBI single by Kevin Quinn drives in Zach Pesson, and then Ben Thomas with an RBI double to drive in Kevin Quinn made it a three to three game, and then Hollison took the lead in the top of the third, an RBI single by Zach Pesson allowed Brad Seymour to score, and then Sean Jouette would also later score in the inning as well. That made it a five to three game. At that point, the Hillers tied it up in the bottom of the fourth, a two run homer by Ben McKenzie, an absolute blast past the center field fence, allowed Hebert and McKenzie to tie it up and make it a five to five game and then no more runs would score until on the bottom of the seventh, the Hillers load up the bases. Zach Sasitsky gets to the plate and he hits the RBI single over the head of the left fielder to allow Hebert to score and uh, the Hopkinton Hillers for the third straight game win in walk-off fashion. Certainly a great homestand this past week for the Hillers as in walk-off style. They defeat Westwood, they defeat Norton, and they defeat Holliston. Three big TVL wins for the Hillers. The winning pitcher today is Rob Pagliuca. He came in in relief in the top of the seventh, ended up getting the win here today. And the losing pitcher is Holliston's Owen Radcliffe. The Holliston Panthers had five runs on nine hits, committed one error. The Hillers had six runs on 10 hits, committing one error. And your star of the game, Ben McKenzie, he went three for four today, including a two-run homer. He had two runs scored, of course, the two RBIs as well, and a stolen base. Ben McKenzie is your player of the game for the Hillers. You also have to give Big credit to Jack Breslin, who pitched three and two thirds of an inning in relief and was very solid, giving up no runs and two hits. The Hopkinton Hillers grabbed the six to five walk off victory over the Holliston Panthers. They are now six and three on the season. Holliston falls to seven and three. A whole lot more baseball to come this season. It should certainly be a fun time. For Bob Hamilton on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. The Hopkinton Hillers take down the Holliston Panthers 6-5 via a walk-off, a walk-off victory for the third straight time for the Hillers. This has been Hopkinton Hillers Baseball on HCAM. We thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon, everybody. Take care.